Lovelessness has enfolded the world. Nobody looks anyone else in the face. And this is not the case only in Turkey. There is a wide-ranging lovelessness in Turkey. Anatolia is fine, but people in big cities such as Istanbul, Izmir and Ankara are more strangers to one another. But in smaller places, in villages, there is of course a warmer and friendlier environment. But abroad, even in villages and small towns, people are strangers to one another. They even never make eye contact. There is no love. Allah has deprived people of true and deep love, which is like taking someone's soul away. And neither love nor anything else remains, meaning that people are hollow inside. They make shopping, for instance, and contact with the shop owners. Those salesmen already have a difficult job. They are in great difficulty in that shop. It's a very troublesome, very difficult, aloof environment. You can go and say hello, ask after them, get them on your side. Those people need love and friendship. It is unacceptable to enter the shop in a rude manner and scold the people there while negotiating. Love and affection should be the guiding principle everywhere. Now, when there is no love of Allah in people's hearts, they can't look around them with love of Allah. And when they don't look around with love of Allah, they lose passion and love. They lose that enormous power within them. When people lose love and passion, a terrible emptiness results, and they are replaced by suffering, fear, worry, tensions and doubts. In order to escape that suffering, people use drugs or cocaine, other dangerous substances that cloud their minds and give harm to their bodies, and the outcome is naturally very bad. May Allah spare us, they collapse both mentally and physically. They sometimes end up in jail or are excluded or oppressed by society or commit crimes under the influence of those drugs and then say they have no knowledge of them when they come round, but they have once committed them. That is no justification, of course, and this is a national disaster, a huge threat. We need to oppose this very seriously as a society. We need to call people to the moral values of the Qur'an, to draw people to that lovely embracing love of Allah, to tell people of the beauty of profound love and passion. We must look at everything with the love of Allah and see everything as a manifestation of Allah and must take living happily as a basic principle. We do not have faith in order to be happy, of course, but we are happy because we have faith. That is also very important. What our society needs most of all is love. There is lack of love in our society and everyone who steps outside it can see. There are a great many glum faces, I exclude all of them, but there are a lot. People do not look one another in the eye, but avoid one another. A real fear rules. They avoid looking at one another out of a fear of the other asking what they are looking at or giving them harm or something like that. Their soul's ability to delight in beauty has also declined. Or some people have very little of that left and it is even disappearing entirely. We need to be good role models here, ensure that our nation and society love one another, cause them to feel love, affection, compassion and forgiveness, bestow a feeling of union and unity on them and give them a sense of security. We need to trust people and not be searched from tip to toe when we enter a shop as if we were entering a prison. There should be no need to even search inside our bags. People must be able to look freely at and talk freely to one another, to be free to greet one another. What our society needs most of all is love and trust. Leading members of the community must also inculcate love and trust rather than enmity and hatred and need to indoctrinate everyone along those lines.
Not knowing real love is a terrible sadness. Allah has inflicted a terrible scourge on people in the end times. Love has been taken away from so many people. A catastrophe, a terrible scourge has been casted upon people, but they are unaware of it. I mean, if love has gone from people's hearts, then everything has gone, and their souls have been ruined. People's souls have been hollowed out. But the majority of people are unaware that this has happened. There are no imitations of love. We see in films how a woman is given a ring, and how happy that makes her. But that is really degrading for a woman. I mean her feeling love throughout that diamond. Whereas if she felt love through his taqwa, his moral virtues, his closeness to Allah and his sincerity, that would make her very happy. But she feels happiness from that diamond. But two days later, that love comes to an end. So now he takes her to a restaurant and she is happy again. These things are not love, but copies. True love is the profound and powerful pleasure that stems from regarding everything as a manifestation of Allah. People have an ineffable sixth sense, and this is known as love and passion. This has been taken away from people, but they are unaware of it. You cannot describe seeing to someone who is blind from birth. They cannot know what they are being given. One can only know by comparing it with something else. But when true love is taken away from someone who has never experienced it, they do not fully experience the pain of it.